What's up, everybody? This is Chewy89 with Warhawk, and coming at you with episode three of the Omega Four. Four. Is four. It four? Wow. It's four. It's episode four. <laughs> See, I'm bad. This is why you're here, Warhawk, to keep my head straight. We're on episode four. Hey, Sorry about that. He's Anthony. I'm Aaron. We are an Omega level threat. Yes, we are. And today we got a lot to cover. We might not get to everything today. Uh, but... We were going to do affiliations, ladies and gentlemen. And then Atomic Mass Games was like, no, you're not. You have new things to talk about. Yeah, we have new things to talk about. Uh, stuff I didn't exp- Well, I knew Dormammu was around the corner with their little teaser. Everyone knew Dormammu. Yeah, Everybody everyone knew it was. But we. I didn't expect it. The, you know what I'm saying? I didn't expect a trailer like the week later a week later you know what i'm saying i expect something like in august like a drop there and something in september or october or something well, like well yeah you because know? if you look at all of the other times they've done a thing and then they do another thing it mm-hmm. it's never this close together right not usually right. um and it's funny they're doing the same thing for legion on the other side of the spectrum i know we're an mcp podcast but i, I pay attention to that game too and it's yeah. funny they've actually done almost i believe with legion they have done the most sneak peeks in succession after like two months of radio silence or almost radio silence after they took over the helm on it we've gotten so many legion leaks and now we're getting so many mcp leaks i kind of feel like they're trying a new thing between both games just to see how people react and Mm -hmm. uh, across the both games it's been super positive everyone's like heck yeah hype shut up and take my money and you know all the all the other things and then of course there's the the people who are like well how much is dormammu gonna cost Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah, and I fig- I figured that was gonna be around eighty bucks. By the way, um, but- I would be really surprised if it hit over sixty, but I could be wrong. Yeah. Or, uh, how much was Thanos? Thanos was like fifty bucks, I think. Was he really? I think so. If I can remember. I correctly. thought he was. I thought he was closer to. Uh, I don't remember. He I might be. He it's been a while. Forty-five. Let me see. Let's go to. The, I have the box. Let's there. find out how much he is, then we can make an estimate. Uh, Sixty-five. Sixty-five. Okay, 65. so we were both wrong. So yeah, stands to reason Dormammu is going to be at least eighty. That's at fine. least eighty bucks, and that's fine because of you know, first of all how big the fig is right the fig is just gigantic compared to the other models and then you get a then you get a set piece then you get and like then three set pieces actually and then um on top of all of that presumably because he's an ultimate encounter you have the packaging and all that stuff for that stuff too yep. and and just not to deviate too much but i i know we're not like the most popular podcast in the world but like the biggest thing on at least facebook that i've seen lately is people griping about the uh apartment building weirdly enough and it's packaging yeah i've seen that i don't i don't know what the deal is with that i don't know what ha- what's happening there i mean i saw it a couple of times i um, i actually I know. know i actually have a pretty good idea of why what's up so if you think about it they've got a couple other standard box sizes right yeah um and then their terrain is in its own subset of box sizes and they needed to make a new box size Mm -hmm. i have a feeling this is their standard box size for larger terrains that's coming out so like when we get the doctor strange house it'll be in this box size they won't do another box size because that costs more money yeah Okay. So this is going to be their new terrain box size, box size. going forward, yeah. so that it's it's more cost effective in the long run. But people right now are looking at it like I bought half a box of empty air and I have to recycle right. all this stuff and ran, 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 eh, whatever. Exactly. I mean, somebody did the math somewhere that that decision made sense. Trust right. that. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, eighty bucks. I mean, I feel like I'm getting my money's worth for, at least for this fig. I mean, like I said, it's gigantic. It looks beautiful. I mean, it. it he looks just amazing, and the terrain pieces look amazing. And just... I'm going to, I'm oh, going sorry, to go predict ahead. once. I'm going to predict one stat with him that that might surprise people. What you got? I guarantee you, his mystic defense is probably his weakest. Maybe. Maybe. I, I, I from what I know about that character, mm-hmm. uh, I think his energy defense and physical defense are going to be high, and his mystic defense is actually going to be. I'm not. It's either going to be equal or one lower than everything or else. Or lower than it's... everything else. Yeah. Well, you, yeah. Have to, you have to do something somewhere, right? I mean, because they said, okay, the other thing is too, he is going to be the highest threat model in the game, right? So. Did they say printed or did they say in general? No, in general, right now. 
Like, as of right now, with all the figs released, he's the highest threat model. So, if we had to guess, he's not going to be a 7. No. He's probably going to be an 8. 8 or a 10. Uh... 10 will be too high, I think, because of the... I mean, if you try to play... Okay, let's say, for example, you're trying to play competitive with Dormammu. If he's 10 and somebody plays a 14, <laughs> depending on what Dormammu does, like, you're probably not going to be, you know, doing much with him there, right? I'm... I got but, the sneaking suspicion he won't be 10. No, he won't be 10. I'm just saying I think that's where he'll be. Like, I think 8 to 10. Right around there. I don't I think mean, he's... I don't think he'd be a 7. There's no way. I mean, for... No. 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 Well, so I used to justify the the point levels a little bit by, like, these guys read their comics. Yeah. A lot. Mm-hmm. And, like, I always justified it like a 6 was an Omega level threat. Not... Pun not intended on our on our name, but like in the in the comics, in yeah. the comics, every character that has a six threat is an omega level character yeah. in the comics. Yeah. Um and the fives the fives are really crazy powerful, but not technically considered omega level threats in the comics, for the right. most part. Right. Um depending on the era, Scarlet Witch f- falls between that five six where she's like either rewriting entire realities or just mm-hmm. super powerful. Right. Um so I mean it depends on the character, but like Magneto's always an omega level threat. He's always a six in the comics, you know? Yeah, like Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You so, know, and ca- yeah, uh, yeah. It's so, whatever. Yeah, who knows? I mean I-, I got him between eight and ten and he's probably gonna do a lot of crazy shenanigans. Uh, he's on a 65 millimeter base. Uh, we heard which that. seems small, but it I does. guess. <laughs> uh, but it's his his model is like I mean they can they did a, they did a comparison to like Thanos and like the Hulk. I mean height wise, wow, it's, it's yeah. Big. Well, wow. so I think that was a decision that they didn't have to make a new base size. And then you have the diorama that he sits in that right. seems more thematic, and it doesn't functionally screw up the game where they need a, a base size just for him. Correct. You know, because that that whole design process that costs money. You know, yeah. to yeah. to do that. So, and for right. him to have a custom base, you know, it just jacks stuff up. It That's, does. It, yeah. It's smart to do the 65 and then do the th- thematic piece around it. Um, I yep. have a sneaking suspicion, even if he's like an 8, or let's say he's a 10, I don't think that power is innately going to come in for dice. Say it again? Or, I, I don't think it's going to be like, you know how we discussed literally last week, uh, Thor, the Asgardians in general, got an extra oh, die yeah, for being right. Asgardians. I don't think is going to get plus 3 dice for being Dormammu. Oh, I like, if you. his... If his basic is like eight dice, that's probably. I don't expect him to have eight dice on his builder. You know I what I mean? Know. I don't know. Uh, I, don't, I don't expect it either. But I mean, he's gonna have some crazy shit. I mean, for for if he's gonna be. But that's what I was amount, saying is yeah. I don't expect it to be in raw power. I expect right. it to be in other areas, in I, other. You know. Yeah, but, for for me, I expect it in the superpower area like i think he's gonna have some like for me how how i want him to play is i want him to you know have these crazy superpowers that like give other your other bottles some crazy stuff right let's say for example uh i don't know uh you hand out a superpower you hand you, you pay too power for the superpower whatever it gives your character plus two defense against mystic mystic yeah mystic or energy attacks or whatever the case would be or you give this character two attacks or this a character. This character's immune to status effects or stuff like that. You know what I mean? I, I want him to do like some really crazy shenanigans like that. If, like just if it was models me. and stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. If they weren't, if they didn't, uh, I mean, kind of ties into the other stuff. They they were sneak peeking, but if they hadn't shown off Red Hood, I would have probably put a thing on Dormammu or guessed there would have been a thing on Dormammu where you nominate an avatar of Dormammu. There you go. Yeah. Um, cool. And it does cool. stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Um, he does bring a new affiliation. Now, the interesting thing about this is, is that the new affiliation he brings, well, it's called Dark Dimension, I believe. Uh, no, it is Dark Dimension. But from what they told us, it's a leaderless affiliation. There is no leader. Which means the leader, sh- if there is a leadership ability, which uh, what's the point of playing an affiliation if you have no ability, right? Right. So, so hmm. you and I briefly talked about this in Messenger, and you were like, I wonder how that works. And I'm like, I guarantee you the ability is on the back of the card. Probably. On the back I mean, of the Dark Dimension card? Yeah. 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 
And then whoever's the, whoever you choose, this is going to be interesting. It's like whoever you choose as the leader is going to be able to do it. Like that's <laughs> that's if that's I, a, that's pretty I, cool, man. Like <laughs> I actually don't think there's going to be a leader at all. I don't think you nominate one. That's no, where I don't I'm think thinking. so either. Yeah. Oh, you don't I think, think you nominate? Oh, okay. I don't think you nominate one. I think that's their benefit. Is Dark Dimension doesn't have a leader. They are leaderless, and you cannot take away their leadership ability because it's on the card, and that's what makes them unique. I, I mean, if you nominate, it's got to work one of those two ways, right? Either you yeah, nominate a leader to. and you can yeah. lose it, or it's not on a leader. Oh, it's not on leader, yeah, right, right. I don't right. think it's going to be on a leader because that's a unique design. Like, right. if you're putting this on a separate card already and making it a leaderless faction, I don't know, from a design perspective. I want to that. see I want to see how this is going to work. This is going to be interesting. And also, the, it comes with two team tactics. It comes with a whole bunch of stuff, but these two team tactics cards i'm really curious about so we got dark empowerment and we have dark restoration i have a sneaking suspicion dark <laughs> empowerment's your uh avatar of dormammu card mm, or something similar yeah and then dark restoration maybe bring back the character that's dazed or dead huh? i guarantee you it's a bring back ko yeah. model or, or dead model that looks cool don't it i mean i don't know ah, this is it, he's I, can't, I i just love i'd love it we got a big model in the game now Right, this gives me hope. I see this model, and I see how cool it looks. I see how dynamic it looks, and it just gives me hope for like the other big models. You know, the other in Marvel comics that are huge like this. You know, Galactus is one that comes to my mind, right? And granted, I'm not the biggest fan of Galactus. I'm not one of those people who's a Galactus fanboy. To me, he's just a giant thing that eats planets. There's nothing interesting about Galactus to me. But if he's interesting to you, fine. But I, I know that if they make Galactus, he would. He's just gonna look badass. So right? I have Sentinel too. Yep. I have a dated comic for you yeah. that actually uh, fills in a lot about Galactus. Oh, there's an old no. 78. Yeah, there's an old 78 comic, Fantastic Four, the 70s. I've, I, I, I've read it. It's super good, though. It's actually the trial of Galactus where they put him on trial. Oh, God. Really? No, and, and it's. Well, is it no, good, so though? It, yeah. It is really good. So it's it's not. They, they don't actually put Galactus on trial because they okay. can't. Like, who's going to make Galactus come to a courtroom and it, um <laughs> basically they're holding reed richards accountable for this destruction of the scroll homeworld and they put him on trial wow and they go to execute him they actually wrap him around a giant gear and he's being tortured by like being wrapped around this gear like six times it's mm. pretty horrible uh and they have all these different characters from the marvel universe go on speak on either behalf of reed richards or against reed richards and the reason it's called Trial of Galactus is Galactus himself shows up right. and tries to defend Reed Richards. Oh. Okay. And it's very good. And it's one of the first times we actually get to see he above all. Mm. Because uh, Galactus, they won't listen to Galactus. So he's like, okay, um, I'll call my father to the stand to defend oh, my God. existence. At. Yeah. And so he above all and Odin show up. It's a really good well-written piece but it's it's a very dated comic the art's not oh, very God. good but it's it's sort of this interesting take on what happens when you when you basically are trying to put like this cosmic entity on trial for the horrific things that by happenstance happen when you eat planets mm. i don't know it was it, it was obviously super dated but they haven't done anything since because right. courtroom drama in a comic is kind of it's kind of it's, it's it's to me it's boring it's like, okay whatever Unless it's really interesting, right? You know, it, 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 this was not about the courtroom drama. This was about the philosophical argument of if a character like Galactus has the right to live oh, I get in that. the universe. Yeah, I well, get that. well, so basically they were trying to hold Reed Richards accountable for not killing him. <laughs> that's that's yeah. funny. That's funny. So, I mean, it was, it was more philosophical than anything else. And normally I hate dated comics because I find them kind of can't be a dumb but this one actually caught my eye and was memorable oh. enough the, for me to bring it up here so Absolutely. And, uh, back back full circle like i don't know if they'll ever do a galactus i don't know either yeah but, uh, but love them or hate them if you don't know that much about the character people listening go go get the four dollar subscription to marvel whatever go back like they have all those old comics yeah, scanned in mm -hmm. go look up trial of galactus i hate the fantastic four as a comic yeah. i really do yeah. i find them boring but this one flushes out where he came from how he feels about stuff you know even mm. talking with it he even talks with his dad once in a while it's sort That's of cool. like 
it's it's a deep dive into a character that really is supposed to be shrouded in mystery. Right. Okay. So yeah. I mean, but yeah, it gives me like back to that like. It just it gives it, me it yeah, gives hope, you hope for, for random that. stuff. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, the one that comes to mind, like I said, I mean, Galactus was one. The other one is Sentinel. And we did get a leak earlier we this got year. A of, well, so I was going to go into that. Yeah. I, the, the, so the question is, Dormammu is obviously a one of in your in your roster. And uh, <laughs> me and a buddy were talking about this. And he's like, do you think you can bring more than one Sentinel? And I'm like, I hope so. I hope so, too. Why not? Well, yeah. so my 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 uh, my thing immediately after that was like, what happens if I want to oh like I was like, what happens if I just want a roster of all Madroxes? Is that a thing? <laughs> 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 for, the, for people not listen, for people who don't know who JB Madrox is, he's better known as Multiple Man. <laughs> oh God, Multiple Man. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to roster a ten multiple man. <laughs> That's so funny. That's so funny. I would do it too. I, I would know I would you own... would. I know you would. I know you would. <laughs> he's really fun in MSF, and he's like actually terrible, but I think he's funny as heck. That's cool. But yeah, but yeah no. um, not only. So, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, you're good. I was gonna say, so like we're getting an affiliation without a leader, right? Yep. That brings me hope for them. Like they're starting to get to the point of the game. Like we've gotten this core established. Now they're starting to get to the point where they're starting to do things that are outside the norm, even for affiliations. And I'm right. hoping we start to get to see stuff like you can bring two of this character, right. or you can, um, if you bring this character, expand mm -hmm. your slots out to eleven, or you know, right. I don't know. Right. They can re they can choose to rewrite the rules, right? Oh, they can. I mean, we've talked about that before. Where like, uh, you know, maybe maybe increase the tactics cards list or um, the roster size, stuff like that. I mean, they can do that. I mean, one for me that I want to see, and I think uh, I hope this is down the line, or maybe they're considering it. Um, I do want different deployment zones, right? I do want to change up the game a little bit, change up the deployment zones where we can deploy characters and stuff. And I know they do it in Ultimate Encounters. Uh, but I want to see it in the game, right? I want to see. That's one of the things that like you actually have to think about for Legion. And when I saw there was different right. deployment zones for your different stuff, I'm like, oh that's, man, that's cool. And just the other, well, just the other week, I was like, I want to run Hemden, mm -hmm. which is um, three T shapes more or less, and one person deploys in the middle, and the other person deploys on their flanks, left and right. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was like, why don't I have the Hemden card? And I like look at everyone else, and I'm like. Guys, don't tell me this comes in this box I don't own. Right. And Sean, Sean and Jason are like, it comes in the box you don't own. And I just walked over the shelf, yeah. threw it on the counter, bought it, cracked it open, pulled the card out, and threw it in my deployments. That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> That's, funny. That's hilarious. I was like, I really want to run it. I really want to run it, so let's go. Let's do it. Nah. Let's go. Let's buy it. Right. Right. Uh, uh, yeah. it, but, it didn't get played, but you know, I still had to try. Right. Um. The other reveals that we got too. So it wasn't just Dormammu. Okay. So now we got. Uh. Now we're gonna flush out the affiliation a little bit, right? Not so just that. We're gonna add one. Okay. So now we got the whatever Dormammu is. I already forgot the name of it already. Dark, Dark Dimension. Dimension. Dark Dimension. Dark Dimension. Dimension. Now, do we know – okay, so Dark Dimension got mm -hmm. spoiled as an affiliation. Do we know who is in that affiliation of the sneak peek models? Oh, it's got to be – for me, it's got to be Mordo and um, the Hood. Um, it has to be maybe. because well, – because, yeah. because, I mean, if you look at the trailer um, – What the about trailer, Clea? Clea, I don't know. I think Clea – see. from the – She's from the Dark Dimension, but is she affiliated with them? I don't know. See, no, here's the I thing. I doubt it. I doubt it, too, because here's the thing. is like when you look at the trailer, all the models that are lined up with Dormammu is the hood, um, the creature that comes with the hood, and then uh, – That actually is the hood. That's the hood. Yeah, I know that. But they had it like all like uh. – But uh, Mordo is the other character. So those – it was those three characters, right, lined up with mm -hmm. uh, Dormammu, and then the four that were lined up on the other side – was Doctor Strange, and we're getting another Doctor Strange fig. I know you're not happy about that, but that's okay. Uh, we get that, the Ancient One, and uh, Doctor I wasn't It's I not know. that I wasn't happy about that. It's that I was confused, because this one's titled Sorcerer Supreme. Right. So right. my thoughts on that were that this one's a sixth threat that can't bring the stone. Probably. That's what I'm I thinking. Because you, yeah. you don't want him to play similar to what the Doctor Strange we have now, 
right? You want to kind of change it up a little bit. Well, so I or, guarantee he's going to be a six threat with like not being able to bring or, a stall, right? Or mm -hmm. or he'll be less expensive. Yeah. That would be weird, but like, I mean, so the the great thing about MCP is we're not getting like the M the MCU version of any character right. on their stat card versus right. like some of the designs are MCU mm -hmm. inspired, but really they stick to the comics for what these characters do, even though we have the ancient one that looks like Tilda Swanson, fine, whatever. Um, I guarantee you she's probably going to have the same abilities as the comic book character. That's not gonna change, right? right. So I guess the the real question is is this the first time we're maybe having a slight difference of like the original Doctor Strange's MCU because he wields a gem and this one's more right. comic? Probably. I mean yeah. like, it could be. Sure. I if if that's the case, he might still be a five threat with completely different abilities. Yeah, absolutely. Which, I'm, which I hope so. Um, honestly, like I, I, you know me, I'm a Dark Strange. I made him in the game. Like I like the fact that they're bringing. I just hope he does something completely different. And um, I kind of want what I want from him is like a whole bunch of superpowers like he has now, but just kind of flipped on its head and just change it. You know, do something different. I have um, a sneaking suspicion Sorcerer Supreme is less supporty. If I'm being honest. Probably. Which I. I would be down for it. Um, I want to see a Doctor Strange just let loose a little bit. You know what I mean? Just flex his powers out and look. You know, even though he does now, uh, but he's more of a support captain, uh, a leader than, um, you know, like a heavy hitter leader. You know what I mean? So I want this Doctor Strange to be a little more heavy hitter and less support. Um, we'll Should see. Be interesting. Should be interesting. I can't. I love this model though. I mean, like, okay. The two, the, the three figs that I've loved the most of all this right now is the new Doctor Strange, Dormammu, and Doctor Voodoo. Like, Brother Voodoo. Brother Voodoo, I'm sorry. It, they, they say Doctor on the box. But, oh, uh, oh, no, 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 never mind. Never mind. Sorry. I'm crossing up stuff for anyone that wants to kill me. I'm, I'm thinking um, Papa Voodoo from Constantine, and I mixed oh. it with Brother Voodoo here. Oh, no problem. Um, He, so far, has his fig looks amazing like all of them look amazing but like those three like catch my eye right those three i'm like wow like they knocked it out of the park with these models they look great they look cool they look interesting it makes you want to buy these models and like it, a, lot, a lot of people were uh were kind of shitting pardon my french but we're shitting on the design of the hood a little bit and i, I own the original comic for him and i was mm -hmm. like i was like I own the original comic he's in in a hardcover. It's a Max comic. It's bloody. It's violent. Right. It's great. Right. Dude was just a street thug. It's not like he dresses like the Kingpin or right. has like a crazy figure like, you know, Kingpin's big and imposing. And, right. and no, he's just right. James Parker Robbins. He's just a smart dude that, right. you know, shoot, shoots the dicks off cops and stuff um or no off magia guys uh, sorry shot the dick off a of magia guy but that's whatever. funny but yeah i don't i don't know i don't know anything about the hood like when it comes to the magic side of marvel we talked about this i'm not the most versed right i know dr strange i know Dormammu. from there i'm like i don't care about it but i mean all i mean they just all look interesting and they're it looks refreshing i should say like when i see these figs i'm like i feel like they're bringing something new to the game. I just get that feeling from them that there's something new is going to come with this. And, so I think yeah. I think with the new Doctor Strange, we're going to have a more offensive brawler. Yeah. I think, and Clea is going to be like a shielding support and be more of that support piece that Doctor yeah. Strange is now. Right. Um. Where I'm where I'm a little bit torn on this is I don't know what Brother Voodoo is going to do, and I definitely I'm curious to see what the Hood does. Same here. So there's yeah. well, so there's two ways this this can work, right? And I'm hoping it might be an uncontrolled transformation. Right. Because um, hmm. that's sort of how he was in the comics. Otherwise, the only other way I can think of this working is front side, he's Parker Robbins, and when you mess him up, back side, he flips and transforms. Ah, that'd be cool. I like that. The, thir the third option is there are two entirely different threat models with two stat cards. I don't think that's what they had in mind when right. they were selling this. Right. So... And I don't even think the product – I think if you look at the product thing, it just says two stat cards, I, I believe. So uh, more than likely it's a transformation yeah, of some kind. Yeah, which is cool. Um, 
I hope he can just transform into like you know spend two power. He's the like kind of like uh, Ant Man with his uh, turning into a small ne- Ant Man and then. You know. uh, my my only reservation about that is he never had that much control of, over oh, it in the comics. Right. So yeah. I think it's going to be a forced transformation. Like if he takes X amount of damage in a turn, right. he transforms. Okay. Um, or okay. something along those lines. Uh, okay. Yeah. The more he used his hood powers, the more Dormammu claimed his soul and could respawn out of him into the world and break all the mystic wards that Doctor Strange put up by cheating. So he's sort of like, every time he got in oh. trouble, he traded little pieces of his soul to use the cloak, to heal, to mm-hmm. do all this magic. He's extremely powerful, but then he figures out halfway through this whole thing, this this sort of Faustian deal, he's the respawn beacon for Dormammu. Got it. So okay. that, like, that alternate demon version thing is actually him as, like, sort of a avatar of Dormammu. Ah, nice. That's so that's, cool. like, his will on Earth. That's literally Dormammu at one point pops out of him. Right. Like, mini, mini Dormammu. Okay. Um... So, I mean, there's a lot going on with that character that they fleshed out over, nice. you know, nice. the last few years. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, okay, so, by the way, so he's not, this model of Doctor Strange is not Sorcerer Supreme. This is when he lost the title Sorcerer Supreme and is regaining it. Oh, so less threat, probably. Yeah, yeah, probably, yeah. That'd be interesting. Weird that the distinction is that he's regaining it. Okay. Yeah, well, okay. it's only then he could, I know. Only then could he reclaim the title of Sorcerer Supreme. I'm just reading the description right now. So, like, oh. yeah. So, we'll see, man. I, I, dude, the fix, all of them, they knocked them, they knocked these all, all out of the park. The other thing is, too, they are bringing a new affiliation called the Convocation. And, interesting, okay, so the Tactics cards here, Ironbound Books of Shuma Grorath. Hmm? I mean... That's not a far stretch. No, I know, but Shuma Grorath's going to be in the game at some point, hopefully, right? That's that's awesome. I'm kind of happy about that. <laughs> I was gonna say, there's a reference to Shuma Grorath. That doesn't mean he's going to ah, be in the game. Be in the ge- Every character that's been in a card, they've been in the. He's going to be in the game at some point. Maybe not anytime soon, but I, I have hopes. Not a bunch of cards. That's he's coming too. Right? Yeah, Rhino will be on his way. Um, I hope so. I like the Rhino. So my my only thing, and this is like, I know we're getting like three degrees separated, and then we'll come back. But my big thing that sort of pisses me off, like Red Hood, Red Hood took over for Kingpin, or the Hood, not Red Hood, the Hood took over for Kingpin, yeah. and he had all these underlings that Kingpin sort of made. And there's this really good origin comic, and it's just called Civil War Underworld, and it's right. actually a backstory of a character called Underworld, okay. which. If nobody's familiar with him, he's got an adamantium lined trench coat and like adamantium bullets, and he's hopped up on a super soldier serum that puts Steve Rogers to shame really? and some other stuff. Yeah, and so this so this character actually was a lifetime prison dude. Gets paroled early because the New York court system sucks, right? Right. And he hates superpower characters, both villains and heroes. And he goes out of his way to pick fights with the Rhino in a bar, all this other shit, and they hate him. And he's a nobody that can actually beat them up, no powers. The course of this book, Kingpin and this other dude set him up to steal like something from the docks, and he gets he breaks up this canister open, thinking or that the loot's inside, right. gets gassed in the face with super soldier serum, oh. steals this load of weapons, and it's all this stuff that he has later. And at the end of the comic, they're like, "Congratulations, Mister," and I forget his name. You owe one point seven billion dollars to the kingpin and now have to pay it off, and now you're a superpower, the very thing you hate. Wow. <laughs> and he becomes the hood's right hand man at one point. Yeah. And I'm sitting here going, just give me tombstone and underworld in a box, and I will be happy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care. That's funny. That's funny. So, I mean, like, there's yeah. there's a couple really good Criminal Syndicate characters that came out of these, like, uh, comics that dealt with the hood, but they're characters that never get frontline spotlight stuff in major events because they're low, you know, they're kind of the Spider-Man street-level thuggish characters that work right. for the Magia, they work for Kingpin, they're not right. really in the limelight, but they've got their own stuff going on, and if you start reading the hood comics, you start realizing how deep the rabbit hole of those characters really goes. Okay. And they show up a ton in Punisher comics because he's got to have people to kick around, right? Right, so, absolutely. And um, from, but, 
Yeah, so then for this, okay, so like we were, we were talking about this in the uh, Discord too, uh, who the leader of the convocation is going to be because. Um, ancient one? Yeah, the ancient. Well, okay, so here's the thing we got Dr. Strange and we got the ancient one coming out, right? So maybe dual affiliated? Or is it the ancient one is the leader? Right? Um, if I had to guess, it's Dr. Strange solo, honestly. You think so too? Yeah. I'm hoping the ancient I... one. I hope I'm hoping it's dual affiliated because I want to see what the ancient one could do as a leader. You know what I mean? Just do some crazy crap as a leader. I um, have a sneaking suspicion Doctor Strange is a four point if that's him trying to regain the title or regaining the title. Yeah. Um, and ancient one's a support piece at three. Probably. And Clea's a two. Two probably. Yeah. And Brother Voodoo's another four option. Four probably. something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I can't wait to see what he does. I I don't know much about Doctor Voodoo. I just know he looks cool. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, he, uh, when Doctor Strange lost the title of Sorcerer Supreme for a little bit there, he's the one who got it, by the way. Oh, really? Yes. Ah. Uh, there was a, and this I, is all coming together. I think it was post-World War Hulk. Uh, Doctor Strange takes on Hulk. That was not good for him. He was the only one that really put up a fight up, up to that point in the comics. And, um, uh, he, he sort of, like, presents hulk with his worst fear which is his father beat him as a kid oh, okay. and so he turns back into bruce banner and he's like you know I, i'm not really a f he's like you know stop this nonsense you know right. you've hurt a lot of people and mm -hmm. he turns back into bruce and he's like i'm not afraid of my father and i'm not afraid of you and he hulks out while holding dr strange's hands and it immediately hulks out snaps his hands like at his wrists and just like ragdolls him and slams <laughs> him into the ground <laughs> and just messes him up That's and awesome. everyone else looking on like oh right. oh god uh bruce and the hulk agree in this we can't stop him by right. appealing to bruce right. so shortly after that and some other stuff dr strange like lost the title he didn't feel worthy some other stuff happened and the powers to be i believe passed it to brother voodoo and then gotcha. comes full circle about 18 months later in real life not in comics but mm -hmm. you know they do these cycles he comes back and you know earns his place and i think that's sort of where that art came from right. if i'm not mistaken so yes when when, when they made the decision to make all these characters all at once, they had uh, your backup Sorcerer Supreme, right, uh, Doctor right. Strange when he lost the title, lost Clea, title. Right. Ancient One, and then on the other side you have Dormammu, you have you know the uh, Mordo, uh, of, uh, Mor Mordo the Hood, and the Ashanki demon form of right. uh, of Hood, whatever it's hood. called. Right. Um, yeah, so it's not like they do they did this lightly. All these characters are in. They're These intertwined. Very yeah. deliberately. Absolutely. So, yeah. They know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I can't wait, man. I mean, right now, so as of today, okay, I know we've had delays and all this nonsense, okay, as of today, and we don't have confirmation or anything yet, but as of today, Blade Moon Knight Dormammu is August 13th, as of today. I'm not saying they're going to be out August 13th. What I'm saying is, is that from retailers, from Atomic Mass, they didn't say August 13th. What they said was August. So, you know, usually their, their models come out like that second week of, of the month, you know, kind of thing. So I'm hoping, I'm crossing my fingers because next month I do want to, I mean, I want Dormammu in my hands like tomorrow. If I can find a way to give him tomorrow, I will. But if I can get him in my hands by August <laughs> and like, field him just because I want to play with Dormammu like I I need it right and right now the rest of the the other figs right so we're talking Doctor Strange Mordo Voodoo all this stuff will be September with along with the uh Doctor Strange's mansion and all that stuff um so yeah I mean I'm excited I can't wait I'm hoping like I said I'm crossing my fingers because right now I'm a little pissed because um next week uh I mean, I'm, I'm okay. We're only getting Lizard and Craven next week. We were supposed to get the Amazing Spider and Black Cat. But we're also supposed to get Mysterio and Carnage. For some reason, those two are delayed in the states, and Lizard and Craven aren't. Lizard and Craven are coming out next week, and we don't know about the other two boxes. So, um, I'm hoping they those come out next month too. But who, I don't know what's going on. Um, 
it is what it is. Um, I had to give if him. If I had to pick yeah. only one box of those three to get a hold of, I think I would pick the Craven Lizard box. Oh, same personally. here. Oh, same here. I was. I'm happy with that. As long as I get, because I'm, you know, I've been marking for the lizard for the longest time, so I want the lizard in my hands like today, right? So I'm happy that I'm getting what I wanted the most out of this list. But I'm just like, damn, dude, I really wanted. I had plans for Mysterio Carnage, right? I had, like, I had all these things going in my head. I'm like, okay. But um, I did order my Mysterio Carnage box from uh, Poland. It'll be here sometime next week, week after. I don't know. I couldn't wait on that one anymore. Um, I could wait on the Amazing Spider-Man Black Cat box. I can care less about that one. Um, but, yeah. So we'll see. I mean, I, I'm hoping, man. I'm hoping. I'm honestly knocking on wood right now. I'm really. I, was say, I, I really so, want these picks to come out next month, man. So I'm, we've done we've yeah. done all the sneak peeks more or less, and talked yeah. about them and comic book tie-ins and stuff. So the the only thing I guess before we move to the next thing that I want to ask you because I meant to do it at the start of the episode. Oh yeah, go ahead. Went, um, did you play a game this week? Yeah. Uh, I ran. Let's see. I ran Defenders. Um, actually, I ran it with. Of course you did. Of course I did. Yeah, but now <laughs> <laughs> I mean I play different affiliations every now and then. Uh, but um, I do. But uh, <laughs> actually, let me show. Let me uh, let me put PTS up here for a second because I don't I don't remember what's in my list and I've changed this. I've changed this at least three or four times already. So. I'm running Omega Red with with the Defenders, and when I said that, everybody's like, really? Omega Red Defender? I was like, sure, why not? Um, it's not the most optimal thing, but for me, it's I like Omega Red, and I'm going to try to get him to work with the Defenders, and with the fact that I play Pentagram, I can get I can get uh, Omega Red into the game fast, right? All I got to do is drop the portals, teleport, Omega Red's in the game. So, okay. so I have I I haven't looked at Omega Red's card since we did the preview on him or whatever. Yeah. Um, silly question: Does he poison allies within two two? Um, good question. I don't think so. I have to look at it. I don't know if it's enemy characters or characters, right? Yeah, give me a second. I got the box right here. I caught up on all of my purchases this week, nice. so I'm actually nice. I they're not put together, but they're caught up. Here. I'll crack him open right now. I haven't opened him. Hold on. No, you're good. I'm I'm just getting off my list here that I've been. I played a game on on Tuesday, and I think uh, I think Cable did more work than anyone was ever expecting he could that's, do. <laughs> that's funny. That that's funny. You bring up Cable because somebody in Facebook apparently said Cable sucks because he got one shot about Magneto. I saw I saw that there was a thread about Cable, and somebody's like, Dude. "Yeah, he's an expensive version of of Hawkeye," and I almost lost my shit. <laughs> I was like, dude, stop it. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, so like, uh, yeah, I ran Defenders. I played uh, TTS on Sunday. Um, I played against uh, Mike D right now. He's in the top sixteen right now. He's playing really well. Um, he was he played his X Men list. He wasn't playing his like real list or whatever. Um, I ended up uh, beating him in the end. Uh, with um, I think we played Alien Ship Crashes Downtown, and he played the Spider Portal. Um, okay. I played it at eighteen. With that, I ran Doctor Strange, Hawkeye. Uh, Iron Fist, of course with the Soul Stone and Omega Red, uh, and Okoye oh. as well, and Okoye as well. Um, so uh, he only poisons enemy characters. Which well, uh, this this morning I came up with a cheeky thing and I thought I was being really clever, and I was like, right. man, if he poisons everyone around him, uh, can you just run him within humans and be immune to the poison? Yeah, now exactly. That I see this. Now that I see this, it's like, no, you don't have to worry about that. That's not. That's, that's not, not a thing. thing. Um, yeah, and the other thing is too. Um, I think we're going to be playing Omega Red the most. Um, it's probably on Terrigen Clouds. Um, I'm going to have a list with... Uh, that was my other thought, was doing that. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, why not? I mean, and then, like I said, I can teleport him in onto an objective with no problem. He can just sit there and camp. Now you got two, Now you got a decision to make. Okay, you got to come up and deal with me or leave me there and let me camp. Let me just score the points here. So, because he's immune to poison, right? I mean, yeah, he's going to take the one damage, but... What does it matter? It's like I'm, I'm capping the point and I can't get poison. Poison is the key there. If you get poison, uh, it messes up your power economy and all sorts of kind of stuff. So, no, I mean, well, I, that was, yeah. That, that was the other reason I thought he'd be interesting on Terrigen with Inhumans is Lockjaw can get him in there a little quicker too. Yeah, I'm thinking about running Lockjaw. Right now, I, I think in my current list, I have Medusa in. So if I ever run this 20-point list, I mean, if I, ever, if I ever get this 20-point threat, um, it's going to be like 
Doctor Strange, Medusa, Omega Red. That's 14. It's probably, and I'm probably going to run Iron Fist and Valkyrie or Iron Fist Luke Cage or Iron Fist Hawkeye. It's going to be, it's going to be something like that. Um, so I, I, I don't know. I like it. I mean, um, I mean, I won the game, like I said. I mean, I did pretty well with it. Um, that was my only game this week, actually, man. I'm, I'm, tomorrow's the tournament that we're playing in, in here in Milwaukee. Hopefully, I can get there on time because right now my toilet decided to have issues. So now I have to wait for somebody to fix that before I can leave the house tomorrow. Um, <laughs> yeah, it sucks. I'm like, dude, I, so the tournament might run late tomorrow. I hope not. I hope this is just a quick fix and I get the hell out of here. But we'll see what happens. Um, speaking of tournaments, by the way, we're 40 minutes in. I'm sorry. Uh, let me plug uh, Second Wind. That's going to be August, October 23rd and 24th um, here in Chicago, Illinois at the Alarmist Pub Brewery run by uh, Vince Kirkhoff. Um, I've been to two Second Winds, one in 2018, one in 2019. Both events were run beautifully. Both events were fun. I had a great time. You get to eat deep dish pizza, drink beer, and play your game. It's really, really fun. It's a wonderful time. Whenever when you get a chance, this? October 23rd and 24th. Um, I'll take off. Yeah, <laughs> I'll take I, off. I'm going. It. I'm going. So whoever wants to go from Milwaukee, just let me know. Um, I'll, carpool. Yeah, I'll carpool. I don't, I don't mind. I don't care. Um, we're going to be there. It's going to be fun. Um, sorry, that's 30 minutes in. That's 40 minutes in. And that's the first time I plugged I it. Uh, yeah, I got to come up with a more competitive list, I think, before then. But whatever. Oh, I got you, time. Oh, you will. You got time, man. I mean, there's so much stuff that's coming out, too. And like I said, I mean, we got TTS. Honestly, man, if you want to – here's my thing. Like, because I, I, it's hard for me to get out to West Bend um, on Tuesdays. If you want, man, we can just – and I I don't understand. Whatever. I'm not even going to get into it. But, like, we can play TTS if you want, man, and just scrim. No, away. that's fine. Yeah. I uh, – no, I played Cable for the first time on Tuesday. How did that go? And... How did that go? <laughs> he, he dazed the Koye on the back end of one, and then the next turn, he, he, uh, he killed her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that can happen. Just outright killed her. That can happen. I mean, that can happen. I mean, the thing is, like, Cable, okay, so the thing about Cable is, is, like, the only thing that, to me, that's the only underwhelming thing about Cable, to me, is his leadership, right? Granted, I crapped on it, and it should be crapped on, because I don't like the fact that, um... You can reroll one attack die once per turn. I think that's utter nonsense. While other characters can sit there and reroll for days, um, is I it think once per turn or is it no, once per attack? It's once per turn. Oh well, then I was cheating. No, it's 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 garbage. Like I mean, granted, it's not okay. Once you get used to playing it, it's not as bad as you think it is. It's just it could be better. That's my only problem with it. It could be better. It should be once per attack. I mean, it's one attack die. Like it it couldn't have been. There's no way in testing. That affiliation could have been that good while we have in humans who can reroll once per attack, once per defense. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's no way the ad affiliation could have been that good with that once per turn, whatever. Well, I don't know. I, 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 outside, it is what it is. Like, it, hey, Jason, if you're listening to episode four, I cheated. <laughs> Sorry. Well, <laughs> hey, it's, it's funny because I, uh, when I played a couple of weeks ago at Battle Realm, I think the other, I think the dude I was playing X Force was rerolling multiple times. It didn't matter. I won. It was just I caught him doing it, and I was like, I'll just let him. I'll tell him next time. But um, it's one of yeah, those no, things. I, I was doing. I was doing the same. So five dice at five range with one reroll per attack uh, every turn from Gable is really good. No, I think that's what it is. And 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 per and honestly, I'm like, if you really look at it, would it really? Would it really break this no. faction? No. No. No, and and that's my and that's my response. It's like that's what that's what they should have been thinking about. If they were just thinking solely on cable, it's like no, you gotta think about the rest of the affiliation too. Like, it's fine. It is what it is. Like, I still think he's good. I still think he's fine. Um, I have a oh my other that actually that actually makes me less like X Force because the whole time I'm like, man, I really don't like X Force's ability, and then I played it the wrong way, and I'm like, this actually isn't that bad. Right. You know, I like right. this. It's and actually, now, and now that you yeah. point out the rules correction, I'm looking at it again, going, well, never mind. Right. It's actually not that bad. It really isn't. Um, I mean, it's it's not the greatest either. I mean, it it is what it is. And, and the other thing too is, I kept thinking for some reason Deadpool was a four threat. My math was wrong in one of my games. <laughs> and I was like, oh. Is he a three? Yeah, he's a three. I thought he was a four. I thought he was a four, too. Right Same there. here. I did my math wrong, and I could have added one more model, and I screwed up. But that's fine. Um, 
But yeah, no, man, my game went good. I mean, um, I'm going to be playing a lot more because, like, you know, uh, we got something. Another thing, too, is uh, there's another tournament in Oshkosh that they're doing um, that I'll be going to in a couple of weeks. When, when was that one? It's going to be the 31st of July. If I can have that one wrong. Yeah, oh, no, 30th of July. I'm sorry. 30th of July in Oshkosh. I'll be out there or try to get out there. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Um, I mean that's the that's the ironic part is I haven't put in for time off yet and I'm like yeah. thinking I should shove all these tournament dates in. Probably. Um, um I'm, so we were talking about yeah, X Force. <laughs> yeah. Maybe maybe we should just go back to the affiliation discussion. Oh, I don't know. Maybe. Well, we still got Moon Knight, right? We still we got a lot. Oh yeah, there, no, we skipped. Dude, there's the a thing. lot we this week, man. Moon Knight. A Moon lot. Knight. A lot happened this week, man. I mean, uh, there's. I mean. Yeah, I mean, here comes Moon Knight. I've read this panel to play. I don't remember it much. Um, they get into his backstory that he was, you know, CIA or U.S. Marine, CIA operative, whatever, betrayed. And then, you know, the god of Khonshu gives him his powers, and here comes Moon Knight, right? Let's, let's... If it makes you feel any better, this yeah. guy's got, like, in the comics, like, or I guess for backstory that they don't mention, this guy's, like, an offshoot Deadpool sometimes. Like, sometimes his story arcs are just nonsensical. I can he's, see that. Can he's see got... That. Well, so at one point, he's tracking Dracula down for money, you know, so many, like, takes out the security at the Avengers Tower and pops up on the big screen, and he's like, Dracula, where's my money? And <laughs> Captain America's like, Dracula's not here. And he's like, wait, he's not on the Avengers? He's like, expletive lied to me. <laughs> and just turn, <laughs> like, just leaves. <laughs> That's funny. That's yeah, funny. So, like, him and Deadpool actually hate each other. <laughs> yep. That's funny. Um, so, yeah, they get into his abilities here a little bit. He's interesting. Um, he can't die. Is that what's going on here? Hold on, I gotta... He uh, in the in the comics, he can't die. Kanchu won't let him die. His thing in in Marvel Heroes was he would stop at one health, and for every missing health percentage and energy percentage he was missing, he gained critical chance and damage. So you could literally sit there in a raid fight in the fire, go down to one health, and then just massively f everything up for like thirteen billion crits. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> That's I played funny. him as a ma I played him as a ma well not thirteen billion but it was like thirteen million brutal crits, <laughs> um which is a crit of a crit right okay so um, um but yeah no I, pl I I learned about him when I played that game and he became one of my favorite characters then I started reading comics about him after I played the game yeah so. I didn't read anything on him really um the first time I've like I got it I I knew that there was a Moon Knight character was when I played Marvel uh, Ultimate Alliance he was in there as a DLC. Um, Ultimate Alliance three? No, no, no. Or... Ultimate Alliance one, the first one. Yeah. Where was he in the first one? He was DLC. Later, like when they re-released the game for like Xbox three hundred and sixty and stuff. Yeah, no, I had it. I didn't. Or maybe it was two. I'm sorry. Maybe it was Ultimate Alliance two. It was two. It was, was it two? two? Was... Yeah, it was two. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, it was two. Um, I was like, not the, for the first. Not the one. first one. No, you're right. I'm sorry. The first one was Doctor Doom. Yeah, yeah. It had to be the second one. Yeah, second one. Um, that was the first time I got interact. That's the first time I interacted with Moon Knight, and I was like, "Who's this character?" And I really didn't look into him much. I mean, uh, now I'm more interested in him than ever because well, he's coming to the game, and he's gonna have a movie soon, and all this other cool. And he has a great actor playing Disney, him. Disney, by the way. Disney Plus, Disney Plus TV show. Oh, it's a TV show. I thought it was a movie. Yeah. yeah. Oh. It's not a movie. Well, I'm more interested now than ever. Um. um for the longest time, I was throwing this around the internet before they cast him before anything. I kept throwing this around the internet. I'm like, please do the TV show where each episode is a different personality. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, in a sequence. And they don't know what's going on with each other that, <laughs> because that's how he was when he first got his power. Sick. Now that you mentioned that, now that, you mentioned that would that, be, make it more like a noir, which is kind of what one of his personalities is a private investigator so that sort of leans into the noir thing of what's going on because even he doesn't know what's going on because he has to piece together what his other two personalities are doing while he's asleep right that's funny. yeah but yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway so, but anyway now that you mentioned that we're gonna get into it so like okay so his martial prowess is reflected in speed and accuracy of his attacks with his bow staff he has the innate now this is what again this is where we remember we talked about the x-force leadership here we go he has the innate ability to reroll any number of attack dice and has the potential to stagger his target with a wallop upside the head. What angers me is that he has the innate ability to reroll any number of attack dice, 
And it's like, okay, so then why, again, why can't cable be, why isn't it once per attack? But whatever. So <laughs> we see this. Maybe this is once per attack. I don't know. Or once per turn. I don't know. Um, so for turn, I don't know. If it yeah. says it's an innate power and it lets him reroll any number of dice, that tells me he can just he can just do it. Phase nine reroll. Yep. Just like Dark Strange, but it's only attack, so it's not defense and all that stuff. It's just attack. Um, yeah. So that's, that's fine. fine. <laughs> Whatever. I, it just it just gets me. Every time. It's like. Anyway, so when Moon Knight wants to land a heavy heavy hit, he can spend four power for the Avatar of Khonshu Mystic Attack. Ooh, that sounds pretty cool. Appearing with uh, within range one of his target. Oh, so he can go within teleport range. Teleport in. Yep, teleport yeah. in before the attack goes off. Moon Knight uh, lays down a strike, uh, uh, strength seven strike that pushes targets of size two or less. So, ooh, I wonder. Mystic strength seven seems okay already. That's pretty good. And then you get a push, uh, size two or less. Um, that's fine. Um... I hope it's I hope it's not something like okay you do a damage then you get to push maybe oh you know what yeah maybe you do a damage then you get to push. Okay. Oh, hey, they leaned into his multiple personalities with a die roll. That's yeah, I was just about to get into that right now. This is the cool part about him. So he's got wall crawling. He's stealth. Okay, so stealthy. I'm okay. He's gonna have stealth. He's gonna have wall crawler. <laughs> um, his innate power, multiple personalities. This this makes me really like the character. Uh, this this is where I wish uh green goblin was by the way with the fact that his crazy is on one side of the card i wish it was on both sides but whatever this makes him an unpredictable threat that can throw your opponent's plans into a disarray since not even you know what the chosen of Kanshu is capable of turn to turn into at the start of his activation you roll one die depending on the result moon knight might gain an extra action now that's crazy an extra action to advance it's mm -hmm. extra action to advance one to it's advance. only a movement. Ass. Right, right, right. To advance, right? Which is awesome. Um, more dice on his next attack roll. <laughs> Extra power or nothing at all. I guarantee you it's probably like a blank or failure. You get nothing or something. <laughs> uh, I mean, the, yeah. Uh, the phases of the moon might, uh, might be predictable, but Mark Spector is not. That's funny. So he's interesting. Um, so at the beginning of the activation... You roll a die and you see what you get, right? Um, either you can get a free advance, not a free advance. You get an extra advance. Consider it free because, yeah. Um, you can hit harder, right? Or you get extra power, and it all comes down to a die roll. That's pretty cool. I actually I like that. I have a sneaking suspicion that hit blank failure does nothing. I think the other three effects are going to be on the one per side. Probably. And I'm interested. If, if I had to guess, crit is the uh, next attack. Extra yeah. power is... Oh, no, wait. No, it's crit and wild are one per side, then failure is one. Mm, okay, so I guess it's probably advance on a wild... Wait, no, it's four, it's four powers. What the hell? He has four things he can do, so it's got to be hit, crit, wild, block. Something like that. It's got to be something like that, yeah. Or they take hit out for failure. Right, probably. Well, to so me, how this character sounds right now, he sounds like a glass cannon. Um, just because there's, I don't see anything on defense, right? So everything's like, okay, he can advance. He can hit harder or get extra power. So for me, he's all about getting in and just wrecking face. Uh, right in now. the comics, he can't die. I don't know if he'll have an innate damage stop like Luke Cage. Like they t they tend oh, not to give that out. They yeah. tend not to give that sort of thing out because like Luke Cage only stops one right. um right. to a minimum of one, and he's a three threat. And I I could see like a future version of him stopping two to a minimum of one, where he's like a bigger threat cost. Right. Um. You know, so I, I think it comes down to what Moon Knight's threat is. He right. might have something. Either his defenses are really good, or due to his martial prowess, blanks and might be count as successes. Something like um, that. Yeah, right, right, right. If he's got a power for, uh, I'm just going to say for defense, it's. I don't think it's going to be 
I don't think it's going to be Martial Pyrus as much as it's going to be something like some special thing of Khonshu, like right. Khonshu's Blessing. Right. Um, yeah, we'll see. Um, I think he'll end up being, like, for me, because I don't know, because Blade's the, I think Blade's the leader, so he's going to be in the Midnight Suns, if we're going to find that out next week. Um, if I had to bet, yeah, I would say Moon Knight's not going to be the leader, just because. No, he's not. It's going to be Blade. Blade's going to be the yeah, but who else is going to even be in that affiliation? Well, Ghost Rider. Ghost oh, yeah, Rider. Ghost Rider. You can sure. probably throw in Doctor Strange. Um, Dare, Daredevil. Daredevil. Um, they, 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 they can. They got some models they can put in there. I, I mean, just, unless, unless they're coming out with a pack that they haven't announced that's going to shore right. that up. Right, who knows? I mean, right now, the only thing, like I said, the only thing that's listed for August is Blade Moon Knight and then Dormammu. Maybe there is. I don't know. Um, and then on top of that, with the new stuff that's coming out in September, who knows? I mean, I, I again, my lore with magic and all that stuff, I don't know who's all in the Midnight Suns, right? So, uh, Midnight maybe... Suns, this might be more of like them taking liberties with who's in Midnight Suns, but mm -hmm. if, if Midnight Suns and Marvel Knights have as much of a crossover as I think they do, right. um, Daredevil Punisher end up in there. There you go. Oh, that'd be nice for Punisher to get affiliated. Hell yeah! Why if not? if Marvel Knights and and if Marvel Knights and Midnight Suns have right. as much crossover as I think they do, right? Um, that's we'll not necessarily true. We'll see. Um. Oh, he has rapid fire. I just realized yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was yeah, say, I, yeah. I was he like, rapid fire. yeah. So he has probably like a range range three gun. Rapid fire. Okay. Uh, his throwing knives. It's throwing not a knives. Gun. Throwing knives. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, every time I see rapid fire, I think. Pew, 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 he pew, does pew. not have no. a gun. He doesn't have a gun. Nope. Throws knives. Yep, there we go. My bad on that one. But no, he's going to be interesting. Um, I can't wait to see Blade, what he does, and what he brings to the game, what the Midnight Suns will do. Um, we should see Moon Knight's card next week, and we should see a panel to play for Blade next week, and then the week after. We'll get Blade's card, and maybe we'll get Dormammu Panda to play, and then Dormammu's card, and then we'll find out what his threat value is and how crazy he is. And I can't. Oh God, he's just a big. I can't wait. Give me more of those models like that. Just give me more models like that. MCP. I mean, uh, Tom S game, please. I need those in my life. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, no, but that's it, man. That's that's everything for this week. Um. You got anything else you want to talk about, or? Mm, I mean, not really. Yeah, me. Yeah, me. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, so uh, now that we're wrapping up here, so what I'm trying to do, um, I'm trying to get what I'm trying to do is I'm, I want to interview players, right? I want them to get them on the podcast and stuff like that. I'm a player. You're a player as well. You are. Yes, you are, Aaron. But uh, from, <laughs> from the uh, TTS League um, and from Discord and all that, the first person I want to bring on is Fast Nick. Um, I, I did get in contact with him. Uh, he is in Australia, I believe. Um, so the time difference is going to be you know, a bit of a challenge. Um, but I'm you know talking with him. So hopefully next – maybe that will be next week's episode uh, if we can just pick a day. And uh, I got to run it by you first and make sure the time is good with you. Um, and then we'll get him on and like have our first like, you know, interview or whatever. If not, next week's episode is just gonna be us talking about whatever is coming out this week and MCP stuff. Uh, we didn't even finish affiliations. No, we didn't. <laughs> we didn't. Not at all. Do we? Where are we in affiliations, by the way? Where we finished we? the first page. We did. Let's just let's just go through. Actually, you know what? Let's do that. Let's talk about the rest of the affiliations that we didn't talk about, right? Let's do that. Let's get that over. So that way, some of some of them. Yeah, some of them. So that way, we're not, uh, you know, it's not hanging over our heads, right? We don't got the fandom out there saying, "Hey, what about the affiliations?" You know. All right. The last thing we talked about was Brotherhood. I don't, I don't think anyone's going to come no, after us so. like that. I don't think so either, but that's fine. All right. So luckily, where's, where's the affiliations? Uh, where is it on the website? Organized Sorry. play. Organized play. There uh, we go. Yeah. Aha. We're at, <laughs> we're at Cabal. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Are we? Yeah, yeah, we are. We're at Cabal. 
So I can get started. Uh, first affiliation that came up with the Avengers. Uh, really fun affiliation. Uh, really deep roster. Red Skull. Um, pretty decent uh, leadership ability. Uh, if you do a damage, you gain a power. Um, he can also generate three power with his Chiasm Cube that costs an action. If he rolls failures, he takes a damage for it. Um, he has a teleport as well that can teleport himself or other models that are in four to within two. Um, decent. Um, you know, I still think they're really good. Um, Sin is no here. surprise here, but mm -hmm. they added Baron Zemo, Cassandra Nova, and Omega Red to Cabal since we last looked at this. Baron Zemo was already in there. Uh, yeah, no, that's what I was saying. Oh, oh, oh gotcha, gotcha. You know, Cassandra Nova, yeah, Cassandra Nova, Omega Red are the new Cabal members. Um, I, interesting. I, I, I Whatever. I, I just feel like Quiver's a bad guy. They're just going to fit into Cabal, which is funny. Not really, but like, it's like, we're just throwing Cabal here. Um, yeah, but don't they kind of do that with Avengers to some they, extent? They, they do. But I mean, the Avengers are a little more believable than like Omega Red. Like, I can't, I can't remember one time Omega Red worked with Red, Red Skull. Maybe he did. I don't know. I, I just, I don't see it. But whatever. It is what it is. Like, it's got a deep roster. Um, a lot of heavy hitters in this um, roster for sure. You got Magneto, you got Modok, um, you got, um, you know, Baron Zemo, Enchantress, who's one of the best models in the game, Kingpin, but I mean, Kingpin in his own leadership is amazing. I mean, I don't, I, I, I was to say Mysterio's in here. Mysterio and, you know, is in here. Mysterio's gonna be a problem. Sabretooth's in here, which, you know, whatever. Ultron, no one who cares. Who cares? About. Um, <laughs> my yeah. last game was Sabretooth and Wol so my X Force game had Sabretooth and Wolverine, and both of them did. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. So, so I mean, who cares? Yeah, I can live without um, without Sabretooth in here. Yeah, I mean, they're still a really good affiliation. Um, I think they're good. Um, yeah, and they said, like I said, they got a deep roster, so you have a lot to pick from. So, and uh, I think where they lack is tactics cards, but I think Sin added a few. Um, but right now the only tactics cards you're taking is like. Dark Rain. Cosmic Configuration is kind of like an afterthought now. Um, no one really wants to play that. Um, so, I don't know. Um, what do you think? <laughs> I'm actually a little surprised if you look at this list, you don't have Craven or. Um, yeah, Craven really. didn't make it. Yeah, and, and Cabal. Craven didn't make it. I know Venom's not in here, but I Venom's didn't see not Carnage in here. either. So that's and Lizard didn't either. So that's where I'm. That's where I was a little weirded out that we yeah. we have Mysterio in here, but we don't have we the other ones. We don't have the other ones, right? Which is just weird to me. So for know. the first time ever, we literally can't call it the bad guy faction because not every bad guy made the cut. Right. Right. So. Well, maybe not the first time ever, but you yeah. know, for the most part. Every time they release a bad guy, you could be like, I guarantee you he's making Cabal. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, we have just three characters out of this Spider-Man wave that didn't make it. Right. So. Right. Uh, and Venom, I get it. Venom's not Venom's really not bad really guy. a bad guy. Like, right. Especially so. now. Um, well, yeah, but, like, Carnage, I think Carnage didn't make this cut because he's not an organized bad guy. He just no. wants to see the world burn. He just wants to see the world and burn then, and kill people. Yep. Well, right, and I guess by that same token, Craven isn't on here either because Craven's not really a bad guy. He's just he wants to hunt I don't people. know. He wants, he wants to hunt people. That's yeah, it. that's he, doesn't he that doesn't make you a good person, but that doesn't necessarily make, make you, you want a bad to, like, guy. Real, really, like Cabal comes down to people who want to rule the world in some form or another, and I don't think Craven that's not his wheelhouse. No, so. not at all. So, and Lizard's not on here either. So, nope. Whatever. Nope. Um, so now we just uh, that's pretty much Cabal. Let's go to Criminal Syndicate. Uh, we got Kingpin, Black Based Cat, one. Bullseye. The King of Secures. No pun intended. Uh, they are the King of Secures. They're one of the best affiliations in the game. For I sure. Hands down. Um, like I said, you always want to... What I love about this affiliation, it's like the bad guy. It, it, they play the point game, but on Secures, right? And they dominate that. Um, and they just... So, yeah, go ahead. Can yeah. you? I was going to say, if I, they also get to do a unique pass the... Uh, yeah, they can pass the objective within around. Within your own... Yeah, within yep. your own fact. 
direction. You can, you can pick up an extract, pass it to somebody. Um, that way you can run away with the objective. Um, I think that game gets a little bit better now that we have Black Cat in this affiliation coming up. Maybe. Um, I She did not strike me as... Um, I think like she can yeah. fight, but I think if you're playing Criminal Syndicate, having Black Cat as a backup to run away like Toad does for right. um for the Brotherhood, I, I think between her rules interaction that she can do for stealing stuff from people uh -huh. and then being able to pass it to others is eh, maybe not game breaking, but it's definitely like that's that's one more tool for your tool belt. Right, it's an interesting thing. Securing to do. objectives. It's an interesting thing yeah. to do. I, 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 once these, you know, once I get these models in my hands, I will be. I'm gonna try the criminal syndicate out a little bit more. Hey, look, Craven is on the criminal syndicate. Craven, so is Green Goblin. Yep. Oh, and Green no. Goblin's not in the cabal, by the way. No, he's a. I don't even think energy would put it help that model either. But, um, yeah, Green Goblin's uh, here. Cabal. I think on Cabal, getting the energy he needs might yeah. be helpful. But can he do the damage? Mm. That's the problem. It's like that's it's always Green Goblin's problem. It's like, uh. But, um, yeah, I mean, uh, really good affiliation, fun. They're really fun to play, actually. I mean, out of all the point teams like uh, Web Warriors, Wakanda, I think Criminal Syndicate is the most fun to play out of the three, in my opinion. Um,. The fact that each model costs two on an objective, and you know you got a pretty decent roster size here. You got a lot to pick from, right? Modok is one of the best five pointers in the game. You have Craven the Hunter, who's gonna be ridiculous. He's gonna not, I mean, ridiculous in a good way for this game. Um, Mysterio, who is gonna be super annoying. <laughs> He's gonna be really annoying. Trust me on this. Um, Omega Red is in this affiliation. He just came out. He adds something unique to the the team too he's got a giant base like granted he moves small and i i can't see a game where you take two small like two models that move small it's just you don't have a lot of movement right like you got kingpin who moves small mega red that moves small and then i think mysterio moves small as well um yeah but mysterio has the most out of out of turn at movement yeah, yeah, right against agreed. Out of any model agreed agreed so i can see like taking kingpin with mysterio kingpin and omega red you have to figure it out um, because, just, like I said, he moves small, so, um, yeah, again, this is the faction if you want to focus on objective play and really oh, nailing down your objectives. I mean, even as a casual player, so casual player for Cabal, like, you might not be going for kills like Black Order, but you definitely want to be that more offensive, like, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. hit frequently and hit hard and use your power wisely. This is more the faction that's like, if you want to learn how to play objectives, they're not as good as at fighting as other uh, other factions, that's for sure. But they are really good at school. Very when good at school points. And can really, and if you don't know how to deal with this team, they can really put you behind the eight ball fast. And it's like, oh my god, I'm, by, I'm behind, and I have to figure it out. And Kingpin can be really hard to kill, by the way. Um, the Cost. So I played the Virus legacy virus for the first time the other day yeah and at the end of the game i thought to myself i'm like man if i was playing criminal syndicate how easy would it be to throw all these on one person and just score eight? Oh yeah mm -hmm. yep mm -hmm. yep that's yep. a real thing that's a real thing so granted that's i think that leadership is once per round i don't know if it's once per turn so I'd have to... I think with Black Cat being able to take one from somebody. Oh, correct, correct. Yes, that's right. That is correct. You're right about that. And then pass it. Yeah. Okay. I see where you're. I see where you're going with that. Enchantress. I think too. it gives you more. Yeah. So you sneak Enchantress in there, yeah. and you bring Black Cat, and then if you flip up your thing. It, I think there's. I'm not saying it's like hyper competitive. I don't even. Uh, you know, if if Who Xavier knows, right? Protocols wants to go down that road, they can. <laughs> I think this yeah. is more like a. If you pull it off, it doesn't matter if you win or lose. You could just be like, "Ha cha! Stole eight points." Exactly. I did it. And that's, <laughs> and that's and that's all that matters. That's all uh, that matters. 
But uh, yeah, so now we get to uh, Defenders. Defenders, my favorite affiliation. Led by Dr. Stephen Strange. He can take the Mind Gem or the Time Gem. I'm sorry, I'm stupid. The Soul Gem or the uh, Time Gem. Um, you're always taking Soul with Dr. Strange. I have never and probably will never play the Time Gem with Dr. Strange. I've seen it done. It's kind of hard. Um, and then he's an 8-point threat at that, and then you have to figure out the rest of the points, so I don't know. Um, him with the Soul Gem is amazing. Uh, he's the support captain of the team. He hands out defense dice. He can heal people. He always has rerolls with the Eye of Amagato. Um, and, you know, he's got two really good attacks. Bolt of Adelment, Rage 4, Energy. You gain damage. You gain power equal to damage dealt. And if you do a damage, you get to push in any direction. doesn't matter the size of the model either. Um, his next attack is Crimson Brand of Sidorak. If you roll the hit crit wild, you put an activated token on somebody. If that doesn't go off, you give them stagger. Um, his leader you know, is, yeah. we didn't talk tactics cards for any of the factions, but we maybe we should. We uh, yeah. We don't know. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, some, yeah. Of, some of those factions rely on their cards. Yeah. I think Defenders, Defenders doesn't rely on their cards, but if you want to respawn Ghost Rider, this is the faction to do it in. Yeah, well, it's Ghost Rider can play it with any affiliation, though. It's not. Yeah, yeah. but how many factions have a sacrificial long to throw out? Oh, you can, yeah, true. That's true. I love doing that. <laughs> I mean, it's not I've like it. I've done I, it it's not like you're gonna do a sacrificial. Hey, here's my two point right. Okoye that's gonna blow up. Right. Um, this affiliation, um, really good. Um, Doctor Strange's leadership. Uh, spend a power. <laughs> oh, bless you. Excuse me. Bless you. <laughs> no, you're good. You're right. Yeah. Cat yeah. hair. All good, man. No, Doctor Strange, you can change an attack to physical energy or psychic, and if you do damage with that attack. Uh, they gain the Hex Special Condition. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it, this is a really good affiliation. Um, I my... think we haven't, like, so my only thing about this faction is, like, Ghost Rider wants to be the brawler. And it's like, you, you either you either ignore Ghost Rider or you ignore Doctor Strange. Oh, I don't I... play Ghost Rider at all anymore. I used to. I don't. No one does anymore. <laughs> uh, you take Scarlet. That... You take Scarlet Witch now. Scarlet Witch is the five. She's uh, she's a defender. She's affiliated here. You don't. Ghost Rider to me is just. He's too expensive. Um. I I, I haven't. I don't know. I I, I can't. I I've, I haven't played a game with him since last year with Defender. Actually. Um, okay. So I, I just don't see it. Like his point costs or, and what he could do, I'm like, eh. It, it just isn't worth it. Um, on top of that, I can, I can take Scarlet Witch instead or Modoc, Grand. You know what I mean? Um, no, I get you. Yeah. I just the, the only reason I brought that up is because, like, yeah. for the longest time they didn't have options. Now we've got Luke Cage, Iron Fist. Right. Um, that definitely shores up the sort of the shortcomings of like at the time. Oh, at the time, were, right, right. At right. the time, you didn't have a tank, or you know, for lack of a better term. No, we didn't. No, we didn't. And nope. now we've got this three-point Luke Cage model that is, awesome. is everything we want in this faction. Yep. Um, I'm actually convinced the best brawler you can bring with these guys is uh. Not necessarily Valkyrie anymore. Now that we get uh, other releases, um, I'm actually excited to see what Amazing Spider-Man does and brings to this faction. Yeah, I'm thinking about it too, man. Um, I know he's five. I know that's expensive. No, that's I honestly. I mean, well, here's the thing, right? So, I mean, I already just said it. I mean, I, I'm gonna take Scarlet Witch and Modok, right? I mean, I can see where I can take. I can probably see a game where I can take Amazing Spider-Man instead of Scarlet Witch. I just don't you know? know if you want three five points or four no, five no, points in no, your no, roster. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is, is uh, so let's say for example, I have in my in my roster, let's just say I have Doctor Strange, Amazing Spider Man, Scarlet Witch, Modok, right? I'm just gonna, I'm only gonna take one of them. So I'm no, no, no. What I what I was saying was, I don't know if I would want four five point models in the Defenders roster of ten. Oh no, no. You got to choose, right? Like you gotta choose which one you want. So for me, just because I like Spider Man, I probably will take Amazing Spider Man and Scarlet Witch. 
as my other two five pointers, and then that's it. I mean, there's other brawlers like Valkyrie is. Valkyrie is uh, great at three. I mean, she, yeah, she's great at three. Yeah. I I think Amazing Spider-Man, Valkyrie, or Lizard all have sort of like talks. If you want to knock somebody off of a point, those are the guys you bring. Right. Luke Cage is your hands down like sit on a point bodyguard stuff for Strange in the back. Right. Um, how I play the defenders, um, I kind of play them a little slow. I take my time. Um, I get within range just so I can pull off Doctor Strange stuff and just make your life miserable, basically. It's like, okay, um, you're attacking who? Oh, plus two defense dice. Oh, you, you want to use a super power? Oh, I gain a power for that. Okay. <laughs> basically, that's how I play them, and I just wear you down, basically. I wear you down until I can take control of the game, and then from there, it's like, okay, it's, it's, it's over, right? Um, on top of that, with uh, Pentagram, I can teleport all over the place. Um, you know, that helps out getting certain models within range that have issues getting in. Now they can get in. Um, I'm actually, it's funny, uh, the other day I was debating not taking uh, Okoye for my bodyguard. I was debating. I mean, I, I, I think I'm fine with just taking Luke Cage at three. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm fine with that because my well, the other thing is too, heroes for hire. That card is just phenomenal. The fact that well, the other yeah. the other thing is, I've seen Akoya even with a reroll just go down. Oh, she can go down, <laughs> but but that's the whole point, right? Like the whole point of Akoya is to take the damage, and then if she dies, she dies, right? It's a two point model. But yeah, there, but there, I, I took yeah. forever to chunk through Luke K. I didn't even kill him, but it oh took no, me forever it takes a long time. Him. It takes longer because the uh well again if you play it right right. So if you got Doctor Strange within range of Luke. You pump the dice, and he's already minus one, so he's minus one damage. And if you roll anything good, he he's just gonna tank. And the the tr the trick about it though is is Luke Cage has to be within an enemy, right? He he's not within two of you. Um, less of an issue, but it's less of know. an issue. But it, it it's you have to get into that mindset. Okay, Luke's got to be on top of you know he's got to be on top of characters, and this is how you pull your bodyguard off. And as long as you understand ranges and your positioning, like as long as you know, hey, I have to be within three of strange to get the plus two dice. I have to be within three to do heroes for hire. As long as you know your range and everything, you'll be fine. It's just you have to understand how to do that with like Doctor Strange, Luke, and Iron Fist and all that stuff. Um, so, you know, um, they're really good. I mean, they're one of the best affiliations in the game for sure. Um, not the best, um, but they're one of the best affiliations in the game for sure. I have them in the top five. I mean, I, I, you know, wouldn't doubt that. Um, and they're just awesome. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's it for the defenders, I guess. <laughs> Do you want to talk about the Guardians? Or... Yeah, um, I think the Guardians sort of haven't changed too much since they release oh the, yeah right the right. only thing we really got was angela and then what lovable misfits which yeah uh that card don't get awesome. me wrong that card is really good and the affiliation needed the help where i think the guardians is starting guardians models not necessarily the affiliation itself but guardians models are starting to shine is on these swarm lists that we're starting to see yeah. now mm -hmm. i agree um and you're still not using the affiliation, right? Yeah, you're just using the characters. So, I, I think as as neat as the affiliation ability is, when you're like, that's flavorful and does yeah, but it's not good. Um, if they all they would really need to do to tweak this faction is give you more cards in your hand to burn or a better Star Lord leadership. No, I'm just saying all they would have to do is a rat of Star Lord's leadership to say all eight cards are in your hand. Basically, or or just give me an extra card. Um, give him a sixth card. Um, cause it just, dude, burning a tactics card is, it sucks. Like, could you imagine? That's... Like, okay, for two reroll. Granted, the rerolls are fine. That that's cool and everything. But man, if you have to burn a reliable tactics card that you wanted to play, it's like really. You know, I I just they should have 
I, I think in other in other factions this is less of an issue. Right. Most of the powerhouse stuff that Guardians does is on their tactics cards that are very Correct. good. Correct. Like why would you want to burn We Are Groot or right. the rocket card that's like five attacks? You know, like the powerhouse stuff that the cards do makes it, it I think what they were going for is it's supposed to be an interesting choice. Right. If you want the rerolls right. or if you want the card ability. But people they, are yeah. generally in the camp that you don't want to be burning those. No, you I, don't. I, th yeah. I think it's more of just a it's they have i i don't know what they can do to make that decision a little bit more i think they were hoping people would make that decision kind of on the fly like like the guardians are scrappy and that's you know right, that's the right. route they wanted to go and ultimately everyone's like uh hell no three re-rolls of two dice are not worth <laughs> burning a card it's not i mean it, it can be let's say for example let's say for example Okay, you're playing this affiliation, and your mindset is, I'm probably only going to use this leadership one time when it's a crucial moment, and I'm going to take a useless card that I'm never going to play, and I'm going to put it within my five. And then the other four cards are what you're going to use throughout the game, right? And Rocket's going to get rerolls. And Rocket's going to get re or something, whatever, right? Then I understand it, but still, I mean, you're, 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 four, you're one cactus card shy that you would, you know— for, you would want to play maybe play that fifth tactics card for something, and you're gonna burn it for maybe what, two rerolls. I, I don't know. I, they we'll see. I think another Star Lord leadership comes out and changes this. I think the mindset of this affiliation was like they want you to gamble, right? They want you to play a little risky and um, you know see if you want to burn this tactics card to do something. It, it's a good idea, but I feel like they should have they shortchanged you on the cards. I don't think they'll do another. Problem. So if if they do more guardians, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hear me out. The new guardians of the galaxy from the MCU that's established with like Dan Abnett in the early two thousands mm. or whatever. Yeah. If they're gonna do another line of guardians with a different leadership ability, I think we're gonna see the classic guardians from the seventies or whatever. You know, in the movie yeah. the second second movie we had Stallone and that crew. That was actually the original guardians. Oh. Cool. That was that was a homage to them, the from the comics. So, um, that was sort of the inside joke. The whole movie, if you go back and you know, if you rewatch the MCU or whatever, the whole joke about the the Ravagers and and like Yondu and yeah. Star Lord and all that stuff. If you actually look at the organizational structure of the Ravagers and yeah. all those other captains getting together, they disbanded and got their own ships and then came together for Yondu's funeral. Nice. Cool. So there's sort of a little bit of like Easter eggy stuff in there. Oh. So we would get like seven other characters to the Guardians, but they would be the original crew under a different leadership. Sure. Okay. So I mean, but uh, could yeah, be. I mean they're they're fun, right? Um, that you want to play them in a swarm style. I just again, you know, the leadership's kind of just. Um, yeah. The tax cards are great, though. Tax cards are. Amazing. The tax cards make this faction Absolutely. great. It, Absolutely. The, the weird thing about this faction, though, right, is, like, there's nothing stopping you. As is the design of this game, there's nothing stopping you from taking Guardians characters with some of their Guardians cards and playing them in other factions. Absolutely. Yep. I mean, they're, I believe some of the cards are unaffiliated. I don't know. So. I, I wouldn't know. I don't know. Um, all right, Inhumans. Uh, they came out this year, February of this year. Um, this is an interesting faction. It's interesting, and I like that. Um, I like I like, I like them it. a lot. I um, like them a lot. Like I said previously, I think people just need to play them more and come up with some more stuff with them. I think they have potential. I was trying. I played them as much as possible. Um, I just don't think they fit my style um, of play. Um, on top of that, constantly forgetting how to pass power around and all that stuff. Um, I. I it's, think on paper, what yeah. happened with this release that sort of overshadowed them was we had A-Force very close to the Inhumans yeah. release, and yeah. everyone looked at the Inhu the Inhumans affiliation like, versus, the, versus the A-Force affiliation and went, I'm going to play She-Hulk and pass around energy just better than the Inhumans do. Right. You know what I mean? And, and to some extent, I get it. Um, 
what I think this faction brings to the table that it, A Force does not is uh, definitely like we talked as Guardians sort of get that extra power, they get that extra right. damage. The frickin' rerolls on the Inhumans! Like, oh, what? amazing, amazing, amazing. And what, what kills me is that Ronin doesn't get it, Quicksilver has it on defense, and Beast has him on defense as well. Well, do, do you know why Ronin's in the faction? He's Kree, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much it, right? No, so. he's married to Crystal. Oh, I didn't know that. I wouldn't have yeah. known that. Okay, so that, okay, that's fine. I mean, uh, at, at some point in the comics, he's married to Crystal. So. Yeah, I really think Ronan would have benefited from that, but that's okay. That's fine. Ronan has his he's, role. Well, right? he's not technically an Inhuman, and I think they. Yeah. 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 Anyway, that, that's not fine. Split that, semantic hairs. That's so. that's fine. But like, uh, yeah. So, uh, I mean, Black. Let's say a Black. So, uh, Black Bolt, Crystal, Lockjaw, Medusa all have an innate reroll, which is amazing. Uh, Medusa is probably one of the, if not the best, four point threat model. Up there with Enchantress in the game, hands down. Um, her range three attack is a she gets a flurry on a on a wild result. She's the only character in the game that has a flurry on a free attack. And when she goes off, she goes off. Um, she can place within two with she can find a character within two and place within one. She can reposition like she, and her and her attack does pushes by the way. Her so free attack the. Does pushes. Uh... And has right. Yeah. Yeah. So the thing that makes this faction, it's not like they're lacking in tools no. um, or anything like that. I think they just weren't accepted as widely as I they agree. could have been on launch because they had a similar ability in the A Force. I don't think they need extra characters in the roster. Don't get me wrong. I know, like, eh, I mean, I didn't know much about the Inhumans other than. Either. Yeah, no, but uh, Marvel Strike Force has a couple extra ones that we don't have in the roster here, so I've gotten to know a couple of them. Like, right. um, there's, uh, from what I remember of the mm -hmm. family, the brother of Black Bolt is crazy and wants the throne. Um, right. obviously family issues, whatever. Right. Um, uh, somehow Black Bolt and Medusa are cousins and married. I'm not gonna go down that rabbit I hole. Have no idea. Um. um not Black Bolt Crystal, Black Bolt Medusa. Sorry. Oh, Black Bolt Medusa. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crystal's married to Ronan. Ronan. Uh, the fa family dog, obviously, is Lockjaw. Lockjaw, um, my favorite. My yeah. favorite. Yeah. And then, so there's there's two Inhumans that they could have done on this roster, and they didn't. And it's Karnak, whose special power is he can see the weakness in anything, mm. uh, which is sort of vague. But it's uh, it's not extended to like physical objects. He can see the weakness of people and just break their bones or oh, whatever. Wow. Whatever. Wow. Yeah. So he's neat. Um, but he also can see the flaw in plans and stuff like that, like the weak point, which is sort of weird. So like if you pitch a philosophy or an idea to him he can also see the weak point in that nice. um yeah weird character uh, i think he might be blind or his eyes are like whited over in all the comics he's in i don't, I don't know if he's blind or uh, if his eye if his eyesight is just his eyes are glazed over gotcha. and then there's some there's some alien reptilian looking dude that's also an inhuman doesn't look like a human like the rest of them do um green skin scales stuff like that he's like the Iser to the royal family. Right. So we have like two Inhumans are not well known characters. No, they're I get not. it. They're not. No, they're, they're not. definitely not. Um, but if they were to ever expand the roster in the future, we've got two interesting support pieces they could do to round out this roster. Yeah, and some more tactics. And I love the tactics cards. The tactics cards are pretty good. You got one where you can do rerolls, you have one if they have a civilian, you if you daze or KO them. You gain some coins for that. Um, uh, better Rivals comes in the Medusa. Better Rivals. <laughs> Granted, it's not affiliated, right? But like, no, the, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Super good. It's super good. It's stupid. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, really good affiliation. I think they're gonna. I think with more play time, like I said, um, you'll see them a lot more. Um, they, I, they have potential. I I honestly think that. You know how we talked about the of uh, the Avengers Asgard sort of mix up or Cabal Asgard mix up of days past was like right. a thing. I think that's what Inhumans want to be doing in the current iteration of the game. Is you pick a primary faction, 
And then if Black Bolt hits your roster, you just take like two other inhumans and you can hot swamp and it's no big deal. Yeah. Like if you're playing if you're playing any amount of Scarlet Witch, there's no reason not to have Crystal potentially as a backdoor to you know stuff's not gonna fall off between the mm -hmm. two of them. If you're playing the status game, I know that's like an right. expensive ask at eight points, but you it's know, not bad though. I mean, for eight points, you can put out conditions, and then they can't take them off. Good luck. <laughs> like, I mean, good luck, yeah. I, if that's your plan, eight eight points it's, is a small ask. You're not it's a wrong. Small ask, yeah. It's it's yeah. So I mean, and Lockjaw is just good lord. Lockjaw. Is I love just Lockjaw. Lockjaw. Lockjaw is so amazing. good. His card is really good. Last minute save. Um, I, I find him more useful in Brotherhood than in Inhumans. Uh, you can play them in Inhumans. Um, I just, he's more useful to me in getting, like, Magneto into the game or, like, hey, a Kingpin, you know, he moves small and he needs to get closer up or something. Um, I just, he's, he's so good. I mean, and he has a throw, too. Like, I just love Lockjaw. And he's such a great fig to paint, too. He's a great fig to put together. He's a great fig to, to paint, like, He's Would you say dumb. he's a good boy? Oh, he's a good boy. Absolutely. <laughs> Every chance I get around his belly and give him a treat. Every single time. I just put him together two nights ago. He's so, so fun, dude. He's and he's fun to play. Like he you, once you get to play him, you're like, oh my god. Oh, I was god. gonna pair him with cable. <laughs> yeah. Oh, don't do it. I would I would say do it, because it, I mean granted cable doesn't need it, but I mean if you could save power for the block and not do the body slide and then just shoot. Why not? I mean, you don't need to have. That's the thing. You don't need power to shoot with it. No, no, so. no, 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 no. I'm saying like, so you're within range five, right? But like, you're not at the beginning of the game. You're not within range of any character. So which you know no. how you play cable is you do body slide, body slide within two, and then move a little bit, and you should be within range of almost every character. You know where they're at in the secures or the extracts or whatever, and then you can pop a shot. But if you're playing lockjaw with cable. What you could do is is you activate Lockjaw, you teleport Cable within three, you save. You wouldn't the... have the energy for it on turn one, would you? Yeah, you would. If you're within two of Lockjaw, he gains three power. Oh, that's right. I thought it was only two. Yeah. yeah. So then from there you teleport Lockjaw. I'm sorry, you teleport uh Cable. Cable. And then from there you don't have to use body slide, so you save two power on Cable, and he could just start popping shots and like getting getting his game going basically. Um, so you could do something like that. Um, which, damn, now I just gave myself an idea. I don't know. All right. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Um, but yeah, that's the Inhumans. Um, I think from here, because I'm getting, I'm getting really No, I was going to say, I, I got to, I think we I'm wrap getting it tired. up and do, yeah. no, we wrap it up. We do page three the next. All right. So time. can we just do this? Okay. Uh, let's do, a, let's do the audience a favor. Uh, we're not going to talk about spider foes in the next one. We're going to skip spider foes because to me, they don't exist. The only thing that exists in Spider Foes are the models. The affiliation does not exist for me. <laughs> so I mean, we should probably talk about uh, it do a I have little to? bit. Alright, alright. That's fine. We can talk about it a little bit. We're we're supposed to be the casual podcast, so yes. Yeah, why not? We'll do it. Alright, uh I'll call <laughs> it here. Uh, I'm Anthony, this is Aaron, and this is the Omega Level Threat Podcast. Have a wonderful night. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Whenever you're listening to this. <laughs> yeah, wherever you're listening to this on Spotify, YouTube. I'm trying to get I on said, I said I said whenever. Oh, whenever. Know? Oh, yeah. Whenever, wherever. Um, you know. Um, yeah, just anyways, that's it. <laughs> that's us, guys. Have a wonderful night. Take care.